Hey everybody, my name is Chris Kelly here with ProductionCrate.com. My name is Adrian Jensen here with Chris Kelly. We are here with a very special, some might even say exciting tutorial. Not me. <laughs> no, I would never say that. No, that's a little derivative. <laughs> this is the effect that we wanted to create. We pulled it from the Avengers Infinity War trailer. First, we needed to get an infinity gauntlet, but we don't have access to a very tall dwarf, so we decided to make one out of a gardening glove. Very important detail. If you've seen the movie, you know that the infinity gauntlet is left-handed, so make sure that you use the left glove. Wait, no! Chris, what are you doing? Okay, so very important. We wanna get a picture or a couple shots of the gauntlet before gluing on the last gem. Make sure you shoot it in the same location that you're going to shoot the final footage. Try not to change the lighting too much and also try to get multiple angles of the glove for safety. We're gonna use a freeze frame of this later on to create a sort of knuckle patch to cover up the blue stone that is still on the Infinity Gauntlet later in After Effects. We shot with two of the same stone. One of the stones is already on the gauntlet and one is in my hand. So Adrian had a pretty janky but effective setup. The light was on the entire time and he just covered it up with a piece of cardboard, taking off that cardboard to time it with the leaf blower and the drop of the stone. The timing was a little tricky to pull off so we shot it a few times in order to get the best take possible. The first thing we're gonna do in After Effects is track the blue stone in Mocha. Mocha's a little bit picky and uh, they want to track a JPEG sequence. So if your footage is not a JPEG sequence, which is probably not, go ahead and export it as a JPEG sequence. Re-import it back into After Effects and make triple sure that you interpret it as the same frame rate as it's supposed to be. With the sequence selected, go to Animation, Track in Mocha AE. Click the button with the X on it to make an X spline around the blue stone. I like to start my tracking in the middle of the footage, so that way if it starts to drift, it's a little bit less noticeable. When the track is done, click the Export Tracking Data button and select After Effects Transform Data and click Copy to Clipboard. Back in After Effects, create a new null and making sure you're on the very first frame, hit Control V or Command V to paste the data. Parent the knuckle patch to the null. We had to color correct the knuckle patch a little bit. We chose to use a curves effect and a tent and keyframe them to keep up with the change in the lighting, but you might have better luck with a different color correcting tool. Like expose Sure. Color balance. Sure. Tritone. Sure. Pentatone. Yeah. CC toner. That's the same as pentatone. I know, but they didn't know that. Maybe they did. Getting rid of the other stone after it's been dropped is easier than you might think. Let's use this frame as an example. So what we're gonna need to do is go to another frame in the footage, probably an adjacent one, and try and find a piece of the footage that goes here that does not have the stone in it. So if I just uh, move forward a little bit, I can actually duplicate this layer with Control D and I can trim it to just this one frame and I can move back to where I was and I can scooch that little trim frame that I made over a little bit and I can mask around the approximate area where that stone was. And now I just need to move this into place. It might be a little bit easier if I temporarily change it to the different transfer mode. What this does is it turns all the pixels that are the same between the two layers black and all the pixels that are different are going to be other colors. So as you can see the stone is very brightly colored because that's different and the rest of it is mostly black. So what you're going to want to do is just use the arrow keys and just scooch this thing over until everything starts to turn black except for the stone. And that means that you have it in the best possible place. So then you can take that off of the difference mode, turn it back to normal and just feather that out a little bit. And now we're just going to need to do that for the rest of the frame. So let's do it. Now it might look a little bit funky, ours looks a little bit bubbly, but this is one of those invisible effects that people aren't looking for, and there's other effects in the shot that are a lot more flashy and command a lot more attention. So if you don't get this perfect, people might not notice. That's right, it's kind of like a sleight of hand magician trick, right? We distract with the awesomeness of the gauntlet effect so nobody notices the jankiness of your visual effects. Good analogy, Chris. Thank you. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is get the stone that is dropped to fly onto the position 
position of that knuckle patch. That sounds impossible, how? Well, it's quite easy, Adrian. What we're gonna do is use something called key framing. All right, so we took a freeze frame of the stone the moment that I drop it, and we animated it to move from the fingers onto the gauntlet. We keyframed the position, the scale, rotation, and we used the amazing and free script Ease and Whiz to ease in. This gives it kind of like a sucking motion, so it kind of accelerates the closer it gets to the gauntlet. We also use one of the new soul stream effects to add some energy, pulling the stone to the glove. Pre-compose the soul stream. In that pre-comp, you can mask the inside of the soul stream and feather it a little bit to soften the edges. Also go ahead and drop in a black solid behind the soul stream and mask a rough shape around the soul stream, making sure the stream doesn't break the edges of that mask too much. The reason this is here is to add a more solid alpha channel so when we use the puppet pin tool, it can generate a more accurate mesh. You can use the puppet pin tool to animate the ends of the stream so that they attach to the desired point on the glove and on the stone. Once you're done with that, you can go back into that pre-comp and turn off the black solid. We don't need it anymore. Thanos has a soft side. You will survive. When I snap my fingers, you will be left. Don't worry. <laughs> You can use some of the magic flame effects on the glove for some additional energy. We also used some of my favorite mist, mist wisps. They're to, called they're called mist wisps. Mist wisps. Misty wisps. Misty wispies to add additional energy shooting off of the stone. All of these magic effects will be colored together, so don't worry about the color or appearance too much yet. Pre-comp all of the energy effects together. Under that layer, add an adjustment layer. There's a bunch of ways you can add displacement, but for this shot, we went with a vector blur effect. Blur. <laughs> for this shot, we went with a vector blur, blur. effect <laughs> using the energy layer as a vector map. I pretty much never turned the vector blur up higher than 10. <laughs> On top of that, add a displacement map effect, also using the energy of the source, but Keep it subtle, don't go nutso. For the coloring, we just did a simple tint effect to make it blue and we added a little bit of glow to make it glow. That's smart. When the stone hits the glove, use a bulge effect localized around the glove. Quickly animate the bulge height up a little bit and slowly animate it back down. Also animate the radius of the bulge to get bigger over time. Now we have a cool shockwave. All right. You should always color grade your compositions a little bit. In this case, we decided to darken the background a little and on the glove we used the curves to add in a little bit of red and take out a tiny amount of blue and brightened it a little bit overall to really bring out that golden color. That's right. Last but not least we did the sound design. I used some glass sound effects, some debris sound effects, some wind, a bass drop, and some tunes, which you can find on soundscrate.com. Make sure to check the description if you want to find out what all of those are. All right, I think that about does it. I think that about does it, Chris. <laughs> I am very happy with how the effect turned out. I think it's pretty awesome. I think we will probably do more Avengers Infinity War effects in the future. If you have any ideas for effects, please leave them in the please comments below. Please leave them in the comments below. <laughs> and remember to make, make it, it awesome. awesome. Later, Crater. Later, Crater.